we've got a Valentine's Day special for you guys, and we were thinking, do we go all lovey-dovey and sickening, or heartache and pain? Guess what? We chose heartbreak! <laughs> Something I know all too well. There's two, this is therapy, Greg. Public therapy. No, 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 no. It's because the science... And the stats. And the stats of heartbreak are really, really interesting. I'm going to kick it off with what love looks like in the brain. A nice romantic start. I found a brilliant paper from back in mm -hmm. 2005. And as ever, look at the little footnote symbol and follow them down below uh, for the links in the papers. So using fMRI, these researchers looked at the changes in blood flow to different parts of some loved up brains. As their owners looked at pictures of their new squeezes, mm -hmm. their brains were flooded with the neurotransmitter dopamine. Oh, okay. And the areas which lit up were those associated with reward, and motivation. So in other words, romantic love is all about the motivation to get someone and to keep them. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And here's a cool thing. You get the same dopamine hit and brain pattern when you become hooked on the likes of nicotine or cocaine. <laughs> So when you're in those first throes of passion, you are literally addicted okay. to love. That's why there's that urban myth that if you manage to have a little fling with somebody, but you want them to fall madly in love with you, yeah, of course. Uh, you should wait until they go to sleep in your house and then delicately place nicotine patches on their back, upping the dose every single night. Then they develop a nicotine addiction, but mistake it for being addicted to your company because the reaction is exactly the same in the human body. I don't actually think anyone's ever done that, and if you have, you probably belong in jail. But the connections between addiction and love also explain what happens to your body when you get dumped. So in 2010, the same group looked at breakups and found that a study of people who were pleading for reconciliation with their ex or were sobbing for hours after being we, dumped. We've all been yeah, there, guys. Okay. Um, <laughs> they had the same parts of their brain activated as addicts. It was like they were still in love, addicted to the other person, and the pain was coming because they weren't getting their feet. Now, anyone who's been heartbroken knows it hurts. We had a viewer question in from Volume Low High who actually asked, how do we feel pain when we are heartbroken? So I found a study that compared the emotional pain to real pain. They found that someone looking at a photo of their ex and reliving that feeling of rejection had similar patterns of brain activity to someone touching a hot probe. So your brain reacts the same to rejection as physical pain. There's even evidence that the touch of a loved one can relieve physical pain. And amazingly, that some painkillers can relieve emotional pain. See the footnotes, uh, although probably don't go trying that last one. So heartbreak does actually hurt, but it gets even more serious than that. So we've all heard those stories of an elderly couple who've lived together for years and both die of natural causes within a few days or weeks of each other. And okay, how can two people's deaths of natural causes possibly be connected? But the statistics seem to show that they are, that bereavement does do something to your body. And in fact, your chances of dying increase by up to 30% after being bereaved. And it takes two full years for that increase in mortality to return to normal. Wow. And it might be because people, especially the elderly, stop taking their medication or stop taking proper care of themselves when they've lost a loved one. But there's also evidence that a key component of your immune defences is directly weakened in a period after grief. Mm. But the heart attacks are the biggest issue and your chances of having a heart attack increase by six times in the first week after a bereavement. Yeah. Wow. Now, this is a condition known as Takotsubo cardiomyopathy or broken heart syndrome. It's a condition where your heart muscle suddenly becomes stunned and actually changes shape. Research suggests that over 85% of cases start after a physically or emotionally stressful event, which is normally the likes of a bereavement, like you say, but it can also actually be the shock of intense, unexpected happiness, such as winning the lottery. The jury is still out on exactly what happens physiologically, but the most likely explanation is that the heart is stunned by an abnormal response to the sudden release of adrenaline and other stress hormones. Mm, that's interesting, because adrenaline is normally related to uh, fight or flight. Mm. So a surge of strength almost, but adrenaline here is a, a cause of weakness. Yeah, strange, mm. right? Now, most people do recover from cardiomyopathy in about two months. The stress reduces and the heart returns to its normal shape. But for the old or the vulnerable, like mm. you were talking about, that change in the shape of the heart can produce a fatal heart attack. 
So it is possible to die of a broken heart. And the data supports it. Oh, bonus fact for you. Yeah. The shape that the heart makes, it has a ballooned out left ventricle, looks just like a Japanese octopus pot called a Takatsubo. Hence, Hence the, the name, name Takatsubo Cardiomyopathy. Okay.